Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content. The new rules have just hit us on the 1st of May, so we're continuing on with that today. With a bit of a different team from the last one that we played, we featured that Assault Vest Metagross, kind of Tapu Fini took the center stage in that episode. Uh, but today it reverts on to more of a kind of a sand core and uh, one that I think can do very well in this form. So we're giving Draco's ult with the Sand Rush ability a little run out. It's obviously got the Gigalith there, which can perform in Trick Room with the weakness policy. Uh, the Sand to, to be able to kind of uh, function well. And it's slower than Torkoal, so it allows it to always get the Sand up in that first turn to allow Draco's ult the kind of freedom it needs in some situations. So uh, the Sporting Cast, you've got the Trick Room setter is Porygon 2. The Torkoal there for the Opposing Weather. Gigalith doesn't like the rain, it doesn't like water type moves, so just weakening those. And Torkoal gives you a nice way to deal with those grass threats as well. Uh, then we've got screen support, going to be useful for pretty much everything on the team. And then Landorus Therian with that Intimidate support, the Assault Vest, and just gives us a few other options outside of the other kind of mode of the team. There will be a poker base down below as always, and we'll have a couple of games of the team, and then we'll throw the rental up at the end of the episode. So I hope you enjoyed today's team. Let me know, have you tried out Draco's Ult? with the sand rush yet let me know i'm very curious to know people's opinion on it because it's not something that's talked about too much in the series uh, so let me know down below and if you do try the team out of course i would love to hear about it so without further ado friends let's get into our first game of today okay so first up today we have an alolan marowak jinx porygon 2 tapu finny galarian articuno and cartana so very interesting team you got a kind of interesting firewater grass core there with the alolan marowak the Tapu Fini and Cartana. Um, yeah, it's kind of like you've got a Trick Room mode to the team and you've got kind of a fast mode to the team. Two Trick Room setters there in the Articuno potentially and the P2, which gives a lot of flexibility. Got to watch out for the um, Jinx because of Lovely Kiss and Fake out there. They can be pretty problematic in most cases, but um, I do feel like Gigalith Draco's ult are pretty good here. The only Pokemon we really need to watch out for would be the Cartana, but we do have stuff like Torkoal if the Trick Room does get set up for us. I feel like we go pretty hyper-offensive uh, turn one and maybe a bit slower with like the P2 mod in the back. And I just feel like, you know, uh, does Tapu Fini get a bit difficult to deal with? I mean, Giggle is pretty good still. Um... No, I think we go Torkoal in the back and kind of, we, it can deal with most things um, in an end game with Gigalith. So we get the Trick Room up, get Torkoal, Gigalith out in the field and there's not really much on my opponent's side of the field. They can deal with it super well, like Tapu Fini's going to be able to deal with the, the fire type attacks, no problem. But the Gigalith, if we get the weakness policy activated, then at least we'll be threatened from that side of things, you know. Um, but I'm hoping that Draco... Draco's ult can do some work in this one. So we're going to see Cartana and Jinx come up from my opponent. Okay. Ah, it's, it's tricky because you kind of don't want to ignore the Cartana, but we don't want to leave the uh, the Gigalith on the field either. And we could protect Gigalith here. We have got protect. Don't worry, you can see it just there. Uh, I, we could protect Gigalith, that's the thing. Um, and then max with Dragazol and just go straight after the Jinx. The only issue, well, it's not really an issue at all because we go for the Bold Peak. We don't need to worry about, um, we don't need to worry about the lovely Kiss then. Yeah, I think we do this. I think we try and get rid of the Jinx as soon as possible. The Cartana may max here. This is the only issue that the, the Cartana maxing, go on max Airstream and then the Jinx getting the jump. The Jinx won't get the jump on us with one airstream, so we, we should still be fine. Um, we just want to get rid of the Jinx, really, and the Sash is probably there. The Assault Vest probably on on the Cartana. It's just that we've got to keep an eye on like Cartana because it's get the the Beast Boost ability, um, and if it starts to kind of get that momentum with those those attack boosts, then it's not ideal. We're just going to see a fake out from from the Jinx. Okay, so that's fine. Um, clicking that. Dynamax button turn one. We take the Jinx down to a sash. That'll be good if we do. We do, yeah. So the sand will get rid of it, and we'll probably see like a leaf blade, leaf blade from the Cartana potentially. I'd imagine. 
maybe, maybe Steel Spike, I don't know, uh, Steel, what, Smart Strike, that's the one, yeah, into Gigalith, okay. Now, ideally there, I want to be bringing in, like, Torkoal, but if I do that, then I lose the, the speed jump on the, um, on the Jinx, but we've got the option this next turn where we can potentially get something, especially if the Finny comes onto the field, but it is going to be the Marowak, okay, Marowak. That's fine. I mean, we've got. It's kind of not so fine because it can it can max, and that would that would not be so good. Um, let's bring in Torkoal. Um, like, do we go Max Quick or Max Worm? Max Wormwind. See again, I don't really want to bring in. I think we take a steel. We definitely take. I think we just Rock Slide. Because they're gonna proc a yeah, I think we just rock slide and go max wormwind. Reduce the attack stat on both. Uh, it means that at least Drago's ult will still get the jump on Cartana this turn. Um, the 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 smart strike won't knock out Gigalith. And the rock slide should get some nice damage, especially with the weakness policy proc'd. Yeah, the Marowak going to be the thing that maxes here. So, we'll get the Wormwind. And especially with the minus one attack drop, like, you know, Cortana is definitely not picking up the knockout onto Gigalith. And if we do get our weakness policy proc'd, a Rock Slide potentially could get that Marowak. Potentially. Potentially, we'll see. Uh, there's a Smart Strike coming in. So, it is minus one. Take that pretty well. Get the weakness policy boost. We'll see where the Marowak goes. You've got to go. You've got to be going after the Draco's ult, right? But we should still take that. Yeah, there's a max quake. The Draco's ult. You're not gonna. Yeah, into Draco's ult. Yeah, we take that. The minus one helping us out so much there. And if we can get the knockout onto the Marowak with the rock slide, then we're sitting in a pretty nice position. There we go. Gigs. Gigalith doing all the work for us. That's what we want to see. Um, <clears throat> right, well, they're Max Mon gone, and you've got to imagine that the last Pokemon has got to be, it's got to be Tapu Fini. It's got to be Tapu Fini. Has to be. What's oh, Poison too? Okay. That kind of works out way better for us then. Um, we get the download boost special attack. Not ideal, but not the worst. Uh, have we got enough to take down the Cortana? That's a big thing here. And you kind of hope that, like, they don't want to set the trick room up. This is the problem. Like, we, oh, we still got one max turn left as well, you know? So that's, that's pretty huge for us. But we could potentially... Nah, I just don't know if we're going to be able to get the Cortana. But I tell you what we could potentially do is... Could I defend some body? We, we could just now. Let's just rock slide again, and let's go for another max wormwind into the Cartana this time. It's not going to be very effective, but it means that Cartana is not picking anything up now. Yeah, and if the trick room goes up, I mean, Giggle is in an amazing spot, and then we got Torkoal in the back to come in, so we're not in a bad spot at like one little bit. P2 is likely to go after the Drake result. Ooh. Sacred Sword into Draco's ult. Are they doubling up into it? Ice Beam into... Glyph. No, no, no way. Not with the sand up. You're not getting us there. This should get the Cartana. Yeah, and then we do a nice chunk to the P2. And then we can Bald Beak the next turn. And um, we'll get the Electric Terrain boost as well. Which, the Life Orb, it should be enough to get the P2. And we haven't got the issue of Hustle anymore, which is super nice because it was always one of the drawbacks, right? With using Drago's ult, the Hustle, you'd always like be sweating at this point. So we'll just body press and we'll go for all people. And this combination has just swept us our first game. So doing really well as we see the battle cancel. A little bit disappointed. I kind of wanted to see the bolt be pick up the uh, the knockout, but you never get the chance. Very good game to my opponent. Um, and uh, yeah, the combination... Really nice, you know, sometimes you, you, you build a team with a combination and you never really get to feature it. So I feel I'm like, I'm just really happy, 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 happy that we got to feature that in our first one. Anyway, we'll move on to our next battle of the episode.
Next up, we got Matteo playing a team of Reggie Rock, Entai, Tapu Fini, Porygon 2, Brimstall, and Galarian Moltres. This looks perfect for Draco's ult. This looks so good for Draco's ult. It really does. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing that I would worry about a little bit would be the Reggie Rock, because the Reggie Rock can start, can probably take the majority of attacks that we're going to be able to throw out at it. Uh, which is make it a little bit more difficult to deal with for sure um, and obviously screen support as well makes things difficult um, clear body we can't really utilize the intimidate as much as we want to I think probably trick rooms are best route to go down especially with the gigalith um, and if we can kind of get our body presses kind of going early on would be really useful I think P2 and then what's our last Pokemon going to be Grimmsnarl going to be worth it here, or I don't know. I feel like more of a like an end game. Maybe Landorus is better, but then Tolkol's just a better option in Trick Room, especially to support the Gigalith. You know, uh, especially if the Tapu Fini becomes a little bit more of an issue. Uh, yeah, let's go Tolkol. I mean, it's a bit of a stretch, you know. I think like. Landorus gives us a little bit of a better matchup against the Reggie Rock, but then the Reggie Rock gets like the curses up and stuff like that, and we pop a weakness policy. It's a bit more difficult to uh, to manage. Whereas with Torkoal, at least we've got options where we could potentially catch them with a burn and jealousy, get the burn onto them. That residual damage might be kind of clutch in the, in the latter stages of this game. Okay, Entai and. Rimsnarl. We're going to see the Reflect. We're probably going to see a Sacred Fire, I would imagine. But where are you Sacred Firing into? Because, like, Gigalith doesn't care about that at all. And it gives us the perfect opportunity to go for, like, an Iron Defense here. And potentially just go into P2 right now and keep Draco's ult for an endgame situation. Because P2 coming in, yeah, it's going to take a bit of damage from a Sacred Fire, but... We should be able to take multiple of those to allow our trick room getting up. And you know the beauty about uh, Giglith with even if it gets burned, like the body press doesn't really rely on that attack stat, so we don't really mind too much about that. Sacred Fire coming out, connecting with our P2. We soak that up pretty well and do take a burn for our troubles, which is not ideal. We do get the iron defense up though. The only thing that's gonna be able to kind of prevent us getting the trick room up now is gonna be torn from the Grim Snarl, but has it got taunt? Probably not. Not super likely. Um, now the question is, do we do we protect Gigalith now, or do we go for another? Do we go for another Iron Defense? Because that would then give us real momentum swings if we see something like uh, the P2 come in. But I think we're probably better off just kind of not being burnt because then at least we could utilize our max turns you know yeah okay we'll go for the trick room we'll go for a protect i don't really want to get burnt i really don't want to get burnt hopefully we don't see a taunt that wouldn't be bad fake tears okay fake tears that's fine and then another sacred fire doubling up into the gigalith there yeah okay perfect perfect okay it's not so perfect because the fake tears is still going to be a, bit, a big big issue for us of course um, and it's not like we've got a way to uh, take on the Entai. Probably doubling up into Entai with with um, Max Rockfall. Uh, I don't really want to max it though. That's the thing. I don't want to max it too early on. And I don't think a Rock Slide and a Tri Attack is going to be enough to get it where I think probably... Mm, is body press going to be enough to get it? I doubt it. I think we max. We get rid of the anti. We double up into that slot. And I try attack as well. Yeah. And I think we get that. I think that should get the anti. Then anything coming in on that slot would be kind of nuked anyway. Okay. So we're gone. Full fledged giggly. The problem is with the, the, the fake tears from the Grim Star. It does make it a bit easier for my opponent to bring Tapu Fini in and kind of utilize that. But at the same time, it doesn't mean we have to keep Gigalith out in the field. It's just really good disruptively. Uh, it makes it difficult to kind of 
maintain its staying power on the field as long as it is maxed. It'd be nice if it picks up the knockout. I don't expect it will, not behind the reflex. Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit misjudged then. Okay, try attack coming out. What are we going to see into the Grim Snarl? That's oh, really respectable damage and the paralysis there as well, which may help us a little bit. Okay. I mean, the thing is with the Sandstorm up as well, you know, even with the fake tears, even if we see Finny come in, we're still going to be able to take at least one attack, as long as the, uh, the sand the sand stream stays up. Okay, tapping Finny, hitting the field. Going to get that Misty Terrain active. Always useful. So, what we want to do is... Hmm, how many turns of sand have we got left? Because we need to make sure that when this trick room ends, we've got... Okay, two turns. Now, ideally... What we'll do, we've got one turn. I think we've got one turn here. We've got one turn here where we can really get rid of the Finny. And I think, do we go after the Grim Snarl? Just get rid of that line of support, you know? He's going to fake tears again. That's the issue. And it might be worth just sacrificing everything altogether. But at the same time, I don't think you take us down. I still don't think you take us down. Unless you go minus four. Which would be really bad. Okay, let's go after Grim Snarl and let's. I think we'll recover with P2 because we just timed out, so that's our mistake. But we should. Yeah. I think the saving grace for us here would be the, the fully paralysis. Like, fully paralyzed Grim Snarl. It won't be able to get another fake tears off. But I'm still kind of confident, even if they do get a fake tears off, we should be able to take a max guys out in the sand. No! Really hope that's not us. Everything around me is working. There's the paralysis as well. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why we got the connection issue. You can see why. You can see why. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm really disappointed that this is our side. We get the recover, which is always useful. It means that we're going to be able to uh, get uh, health back. It means we can get the trick room up a bit later on if we need it. Or reverse it as well. So guys are coming out. We are minus two. I think another fake tears would have got us. I think another fake tears would have got us. And the weather does shift. So it means in our last turn we probably we got a weakness policy. We get the sand back up. Uh and we try and concentrate. Oh we switch out to Torco to get our sand back up later once the trick room ends. But we'll see. Is it us? It looks like it might be us, you know. Is it us? It is us. That's really frustrating. And friends, all I can say is I'm sorry. Sorry. But we had a good way to win that one. We'll have one more today, so we'll jump straight into it. And we'll, uh, we'll try and not have any more issues going forward. Okay, so next up, we have Cresselia, Incineroar, Tapufini, Stakataka, Reggie, Alecki, and Galastria. So, an old familiar face that we've not seen for a while is Cresselia. Um, obviously provides a lot of support in Trick Room, Ally Switch, Helping Hand. All sorts of things like that. So you've got the double trick room on this team. Uh, you've got the support through Incineroar. Obviously Stack Attack will be in the other trick room Pokemon that's going to be able to abuse that. And Glastria is going to love the trick room environment as well. Uh, it's pretty much a heavy trick room team. Although you have got a little bit of a middle in speed Tapu Fini which can perform well in trick room if the conditions are right. And then you've got Regilecki which just doesn't like trick room at all. Now before I smash my milk prune again. Um... Do I want to go with Draco's ult in this one? I mean, Draco's ult's pretty good uh, against the Aleki, against Finny. Um, and do work against Stacker in the right conditions. Doesn't really like Intimidate too much, so that makes it a little bit more difficult. Whereas Gigalith could be a great option here. Gigalith could be a real good option, especially with Grimmsnarl. I think maybe we go Gigalith, Grimmsnarl. Um, P2. Do we just go P2? Uh, can't bring Torkoal, I don't think. And I don't want to rely too much on my opponent not setting their trick room up, so I think we go Drake result of a Torkoal. Because yeah, Stax gives us a pretty hard time anyway. Okay, let's go for that. Let's go for that. The only reason Torkoal would be decent in this matchup would be, obviously, the Glastria. It gives us a way better option. But I mean, the Gigalith isn't too bad, is it? It isn't too bad. If we can get 
an iron defensor, then we're sitting pretty happy at that point. The most annoying thing about that last match as well is I have like the bot that we run on Discord. Nothing wrong with it. Still connected, still running. So it's it's just literally the server, uh, the, the ladder server. It does that from like occasionally, doesn't it? It does just kick you off, which is really frustrating. Okay, we're going to see Tapu Fini and Cresselia come out for my opponent. Kind of like to get Drakas all onto the field. Because um, I don't expect we're going to see the trick room go up at this point. But can we? I mean, you probably don't Moonblast, right? You don't Moonblast. I think we'll bring Drakas all in. We Moonblast Gigalith then. That kind of sucks. I mean, we could fake out as well. I don't see the Tapu Fini maxing here. The only issue would be, right, if they do Trick Room, which would make no sense at all. Um, but a Fake Out prevents the Calm Mind this turn, which puts us in a, a great position. And then the following turn, we could potentially switch back into Gigalith, because it's more likely my opponent set, setting up the Trick Room at that point. Yeah, no, no max here. Ally switch. <laughs> Starting with those games already. Okay, well. Yeah, I don't think we max Draco's ult either. Um, they're going to ally switch again, aren't they? They are going to ally switch again. Because we just bald beak into Tapu Fini and it just removes it. I just don't like playing the ally switch games. You know, you know. If you watch the channel a million times, I never like playing the ally switch games. And I'm just going to click into the... I'm just going to click into the Fini slot. And I'm just going to light screen while I've got the opportunity. You may see a trick and get set up here, but I mean, it's fine. Okay, Tapu Fini protected. It's a white. We're just going to see the trick room get set up, I would imagine. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Now, we either go for a spirit break into Finny and just double into that slot. Or we kind of cover bases and play to the ally switch now. Because, like, what's Crest got? What can Crest do? It can help in hand. Or it can ally switch. Or we can get caught out. I mean, I've just said I don't play into the ally switch games. And I shouldn't really. But now I feel like if we don't target the Crest. Okay, we'll play it safe. Just in case, we'll Spirit Break into the Finny slot. That's so annoying. I shouldn't play the ally switch games. This is why I should listen to myself. And you should listen to me. <laughs> because, yeah, th this is annoying now. Up in hand. Ah, okay. Right. Well, moon blast. It's minus one. Behind the light screen. Drake is all is done. We'll get a bolt beak off, but don't think it's going to be very relevant. I mean, it doesn't do too bad damage. We need to keep uh, Drake is all. Well, do we need to keep it for later on in this match? I think I'd like to switch in Gigalith now. Because the Finney's after this, after this point, mm. I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to switch in P2, and we're going to switch in to Gigalith. Why don't we just switch in Gigalith? For Draco's ult, because I could do, but then... I just worry about a muddy water potentially coming out now, but I don't think we're going to see that. I think you've got, well, potentially. It makes sense because you probably get helping out muddy water, will get the Drake result. And then, obviously, as well, it covers a potential uh, Gigalith switching, which makes sense because of how low health the Drake result is at this point. Okay, well, we get P2 onto the field regardless. We've done it now. Ice Beam coming out into yeah P2 and we're gonna see probably a moon yeah another moon blast but this time into the gigs I reckon yeah okay well I mean we take that pretty well pretty well all co all things considered okay now I think we double up into 
the Finny here, potentially. But they're going to protect, right? They're going to protect. So it might even be better just going for a rock slide. And then try attack into the crest. And just removing... Okay. Helping hand. Muddy water. But I kind of take that, to be honest. Because... They'll just, they're just going to activate our weakness policy then. And then they're going to be in that bad position where they... We will be able to just remove both from the field. With a rock slide. This doesn't get that one. Just, just missing. Tucking Finny Finches. Okay. Hmm. How many turns of trick room we've got left? Maybe one. Which is not ideal because the Finny just protects now. And we kind of want a sand back up. But I mean, we can get a sand back up if we want. Um. Yeah, we'll just cover the finny with a try attack and we'll go rock slide again. Ooh, they're not protecting. That, that's dangerous, dangerous. Unless we proc a uh, 50% berry. Oh, uh, you know, one of the big berries, which we potentially could do. But there's always a chance that they could just... Um, no, there's no berry there. Huh. Okay, and they just lose finny. The trick room does reset now, which isn't ideal, but I mean... At the same time, we're kind of in a good spot with P2 just to get the Trick Room back up. And get Giglith kind of rolling. Okay, NC coming in. Uh, and Glastria. Yeah. Okay. Trick Room is a little bit tricky, of course. We kind of want to get... I think we get Grimmsnarl onto the field. Maybe Max Giglith and go for Max Rockfall into Glastria. We could protect, get our weakness policy activated. Uh, I don't think so. I think mm, the only issue is doing that. Um, okay, I think we go Max Rockfall into the instant roll here. Because I think this turn, I think they go fake out into P2. And I think they max, go max quick into Gigalith. I'd rather get rid of the Incineroar though, so I'm not having to like always contend with like parting shots and stuff like that. And I don't really fancy activating a weakness policy to have to deal with that the next turn. Be kind of nice to get the reflector before we go any further. I just dread. A steel spike from the Glastria into like Grimmsnarl now, just to boost those defenses. That would be that would be ideal. But we probably need the weakness policy activated to get the Incineroar. I think and minus one. Uh, I'm not too sure if we get it. The other option here would have been just protecting. Okay. Ah, oh, that's not ideal. That is not ideal at all. Okay, so no fake out. They were kind of happy for us to get. Okay, and, and the steel spike. Are they reading our minds? They're reading our minds. Okay, well, we do get the. We're going to get a weakness policy activated, which just resets our attack. So we'll get the incineral. They get the defense boost. Um. Hmm. We don't we just miss the incineral. Okay. We may need to max guard this next turn. Reflect. Do we I just don't want to take another parting shot. That's the, the big problem. Um and the defense boost. It's the defense boost that's that's kind of give them the, the leg up, isn't it? They're just gonna parting shot us again. The issue, isn't it? And this glass is just gonna get like super out of control and I don't feel like we've got anything to kind of deal with it considering that P2 is probably our, our only option um it's not the best option I would say right well um I mean we can fake out Grimm's Incineral here and just get rid of it but then we don't have the reflect but I do think they actually go after 
I do think they go after the Grimstar here. I don't think they go after uh, the Gigalith. If they do, obviously, then we're in a boat of trouble. Steel Spike. Yeah, they go Grimstar, which we'll lose, but that's kind of... It's not too bad, because we'll get Grigazol in, or we can get P2 in. Um... It's probably better to get P2 onto the field, in all honesty, because then we can potentially try and get a Trick Room up and then get an Iron Defense in before... Wow, it does like nothing. It does like nothing. Yeah, we need to get Draco's Alt onto the field now. Get rid of the Incineroar. Um, hmm. Because you've got to worry about the Incineroar having something like Taunt as well, which would be a bit of a problem. Uh, we'll go with old Reliable Dragon Claw here. Um, just Max Guard, I think. Problem is going Max Guard. I think we have to Max Guard, because I don't think you go after Draco's ult. I think, well, Draco's ult will go down anyway to P2. Uh, to the, the residual damage, the life orb damage. One HP. Ooh, we don't know. We're gonna survive, I think. Ooh, they do go into the Draco's ult. Ah, uh, okay. And we can maybe still do. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna be able to do this. I really don't. I don't think so. They've got like plus three attack. They just manage the Glastria so much better than than us, uh, the, the our side of the field anyway. So, P2 in. Let's think. What could we do? Because I don't think we're going to be able to iron defense. We maybe we maybe can. Thing is, like P2 will just drop whatever Glastria does. But can we get a trick room up? I don't think so. Because the, the options are we double protect, right? We try a double protect and get our trick room up. But it's so risky doing that. Because I think we're better off. We're literally better off just doubling up into Glastria here. Um, do we go for an iron defense anyway? We're probably so low health. I don't think it's really going to make too much difference. But I think we just double... And I think we just body press. Uh, no, we rock slide, I think. I think single target rock slide. P2 might be able to get... It in two hit. Oh, no. We get the paralysis. I mean, Gigalith's going to be faster than it. So that is just the hacks that we needed. Because now, whatever happens, we're going to be able to get it. <laughs> we don't deserve to win this game, but we are going to take it. We are going to take it, which is really unfortunate. But yeah, so the trick room there wasn't really... Because it's so risky at that point. Like, if they attack into P2 um, that turn, then the drop with close combat that they potentially have to get um, would mean that Gigalith might be able to clinch it with a rock slide. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But uh, very unlucky to my opponent. And we do manage to clinch a victory to end this episode on. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, friends. We'll hop over now and get the rental code of this team. And uh, then we'll wrap up the episode. Okay, friends. Here is the rental code for today's team. You've got the Gigalith, the Porygon 2, Grimmsnarl, Dracozol, Tokol, and the Landris. Apologies for the lack of face cam here. Obviously, because we've already filled out all of our rental teams over on our main card. Uh, I've had to call in the help of a very good friend of mine. So a massive shout out to Bevum. He was actually hosting this rental team for me right now and for all of you so if you do have a go with the team do give Bevum a big shout out down below in the comment section and definitely let me know uh, if you try it out if you have a lot of fun with it hope you've enjoyed today's episode it has been a bit of a fun one really enjoyed the Drake result it's definitely something I feel like I'll be continuing to play with and kind of tweak the team going forward in the format so do let me know if you're in the same mind as me would love to hear so and uh, I'll just say thank you so much for tuning in have a great rest of your day and i'll catch up with you all for another episode on the channel very soon